Uh, thank you, uh, sir, for the kind introduction. And uh, today uh, we are going to debate with my very dear friend, uh, Dr. Sunil Kota, who is here. And we are going to talk about use of CGM in uh, type 2 diabetic patients who are not on insulin. So we know that uh, what is the standard of Can we have the slides here? Slides are on. Yes, so we know uh, that the usual standard of care is HbA1c, but we know that the impact of hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia are unknown, and glucose variability cannot be determined. We also know that the, there are certain, uh, other limitations of the HbA1c, like wide range of mean uh, glucose concentration and glucose profile associated with a given uh, HbA1c level. It is also inaccurate in certain conditions which affects the span of the RBC, and international variations, inter-individual variations, and ethnic differences are also there. We also know that the standard technique of the SMBG provides glucose information for patients in time. However, hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia are often missed. Overnight data is impractical to obtain and logbooks can be difficult to interpret. This is how the SMBG looks like. But CGM provides significant amount of glucose data. However, reports can be difficult to interpret sometime and provider ambivalence regarding therapeutic adjustments are there. But we need to understand that glucose monitoring, despite self-monitoring of blood glucose, we almost 70% of the people with diabetes, they don't have adequate HbA1c control. SMBG has its own limitations and CGM, uh, and this is one of the uh, slide which is showing that the, what is the state of the glycemic control through SMBG is suboptimal and recent data from Asia cross-sectional analysis, you can easily see that how it is impacting the uh, uh, control. So let's talk about the CGM. So what is the standard of care by the ADA? What does the ADA says? The ADA says that RT-CGM is, or the ICGM, it can be applied, who can use the device safely, anybody. It doesn't say uh, whether diabetes with insulin, type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes without insulin. It simply says anybody who can use this technology and is on multiple daily injections or in condition can use. And also, those patients uh, uh, who are not on insulin can also use, and these are the indications. People who experience hypoglycemia unawareness or elevated HbA1c, people with undue, undue glucose variability, people who currently check their blood glucose multiple times a day, people with pronounced dislike for the finger stick testing, people having difficulty achieving an HbA1c without hypoglycemia, people whose HbA1c doesn't match finger stick averages, people who are asymptomatic with rapid rise and fall of glucose, and people with unpredictable erratic glucose responses to the exercise and the stress. So why is CGM appropriate for type 2 diabetes? This is the recommendation for uh, those on basal insulin, but we are not going to target about, uh, talk about the insulin only. So there are multiple st uh, studies on uh, RT-CGM in diamond, uh, that is a diamond study, the mobile study. The mobile study is very, very important because this is on, uh, done on patients who are uh, uh, having type 2 diabetes and it has shown that there is a significant uh, decrease in HbA1c level as well as the decrease in hypoglycemic events in those patients who are using uh, CGM. CGM also enhances diabetes self-management and improves glycemic control. And nowadays, uh, we know that patient engagement is more effective with the use of uh, CGM in uh, patient, people with diabetes who are on insulin, as well as in those who are not insulin. I will show you some slides uh, which will uh, be giving you the data. So this is the international consensus of CGM data interpretation. And you already see that it guides you uh, about the use of uh, CGM in people with type 2 diabetes as well as type, uh, type 1 diabetes with different guidelines. Uh, uh, and different uh, TIR for different categories. Uh, this is time in range and frequency of continuous glucose monitoring recommendation from South uh, Asia. And uh, uh, this paper is by uh, Dr. Jyoti Dev, Keshwa Dev, and Dr. Anup Mishra, and Dr. Bansi Sabu, and various other authors are also part of this. And there is a time in range and frequency of continuous glucose monitoring, which has come from this group uh, for the recommendation for Southeast Asia. So this is in type 2 diabetic patients. So anybody who is having type 2 diabetes, the group recommends that the current AGP, uh, uh, if uh, the uh, TIR is more than 90%, that at least once in six months, uh, once in three months, if t uh, TIR is uh, uh, more than 70%, once in two months, if the TIR is only more than uh, 50%. So these are the recommendations from the group in use with type 2 diabetic patients. There is also consensus and recommendation uh, on continuous glucose monitoring, which are available. And uh, these have been modified recently, where we, the targets TIR for uh, uh, different uh, uh, type 1 and type 2 diabetes has been redefined. So this is uh, expert consensus recommendation on time and range for uh, monitoring glucose level in people with diabetes and uh, Indian perspective. And this is, a, again, a very, very important paper, which talks about time and range as a target in type 2 diabetes. And this is an urgent need. We are missing a lot of uh, uh, things when we are not looking at the time in range. And uh, uh, we always talk about the CGM, but we don't talk, uh, talk about the uh, variables which it provides us. So time in range is something which it provides us and uh, it should be included 
uh, in our recommendations as a part of, and it is a very, very important need. This is uh, the ADA standard of care. Again, while uh, this uh, 2023 and CGM metrics and GMI provide the insight for a more personalized diabetes management plan. And this is the Indian TIR consensus. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, paper talks about the consensus recommendation on the use of CGM based metrics in routine uh, diabetes care in the Indian context. It also advocates TIR as a powerful metric for the glycemic control. And it also uh, talks about recommendations across patient profiles, including number of sensors per year uh, it has been advocated. Uh, this is very, very important. And this is the RSSDI 2022 clinical recommendations and the guidelines of the use of CGM in clinical practice. And it uh, says that the CGM should be consult considered in conjunction with HbA1c as well as SMBG for glycemic uh, status in those with intensive insulin therapy and who are not achieving gl glucose uh, target. But it also says that it should be considered in those people who are not uh, who are on multiple OADs and still not able to achieve HbA1c experiencing hypoglycemia. So it can be a helpful tool in diabetes education by facilitating effective communication between clinician and patients. And all users should get trained on how to interpret and respond to their glucose data. This is the clinical uh, practice recommendation, again, uh, the highlights. So anybody who is having history of severe hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia unawareness, in pregnancy, infants and children receiving insulin therapy, patient at risk of hypoglycemia, including patient receiving basal insulin and patient receiving basal bolus. So this is more, uh, again, on insulin. But you can see the patient receiving sulfonylurea or glenides also, and patient with irregular uh, schedule skipped or eat, uh, small uh, meals, uh, there, uh, those who do vigorous exercise, travel between different time zones, disrupted uh, sleep schedule, shift worker, the CGM can be a, a very, very useful tool for these patients. People with occupational risk, uh, risk that enhance possible risk from hypoglycemia, for example, driving or operational, has, uh, operating hazard, uh, hazardous mach machinery may also benefit. This is again a very, very important study, the replace study, a multicentric open label RCT showing reduction in hypoglycemia in type 2 diabetic patients on oral antidiabetic drugs. Also, there is a consensus statement for different patients' profiles like uh, TIR for pregnancy, TIR for elderly population with type 1 diabetes as well as type 2 diabetes. Also, we know that TIR is a glucose battery for diet and lifestyle complication in diabetes. This is very, very important. Many of our type 2 diabetic patients who are not in insulin, they struggle to achieve a good uh, healthy lifestyle and sometime a brief period of insight into what is happening to their glucose levels can be very, very handy. And this can uh, help them uh, in reducing the burden of uh, glycemia in them and because it can minimize, uh, identify glucose patterns as well as the glycemic targets. And uh, uh, this is again, uh, these are the international diabetic societies which endorse the use of TIR in uh, addition to the A1C, whether it is AS, ADA, uh, ESD, so they are all talking about, and recently at the ATTD, they, there is a consensus statement which talks about the use of TIR as a matrix in people with type 2 diabetes also. So RCT and RWD, uh, because of the lack of time, I am not able to show, there are almost 10, 20 recent papers which are giving evidence that uh, CGM can be used in patients with type 2 diabetes, even those if they are not on insulin. So CGM technology has evolved over a period of time and uh, a variety of systems with features to uh, uh, suit, uh, suit different uh, needs of the patients are available. Shared goal is for uh, CGM provide accessible glucose data and actionable information, and CGM can improve patient diabetes management and clinical outcomes. The benefit of utilizing CGM of diabetes in primary care and uh, a systematic review it has shown that the CGM was more effective at reducing HbA1c compared with usual care, and CGM can reduce hypoglycemic events. It, uh, sometime, uh, it also leads to better staff as well as the patient satisfaction. And patient with intensive insulin therapy may benefit more from RT-CGM uh, intermittently uh, uh, intermittent CGM. This is, again, most of the time, uh, the, those people who argue against the use of CGM, they bring in the factor of the cost. So this uh, slide shows that the 10-year cost reduction by improving TIR on people with type 1 as well as type 2 diabetes is to 70 to 80 percent. So in long run, it is actually not expensive to the patient. If a good glycemic control saves a lot of uh, money by saving multiple complications which may happen. So uh, CGM in primary care, uh, it is uh, the recommendations again, uh, which is published in the Journal of Diabetes and Science Technology. The primary care providers, they should familiarize themselves with this new technology and utilize it in patients who would benefit from more rapid titration of insulin. Also, those who are uh, not on insulin, shared decision making with the patient will be helpful. And CGM technology can support both the patient centered out of uh, office care and collaboration between the patient, the primary care provider, and if needed, an endocrinologist in consultation. 
So in summary, HbA1c is the gold standard for diabetes management. However, it does not demonstrate a holistic and individualized glucose profile. Glycemic variability is associated with increased risk of severe hypoglycemia, diabetes complication and reduced quality of life. TIR provides a closer view of the person's glycemic status and aids in better glycemic control. And increasing TIR has been shown to have association with reduced microvascular as well as macrovascular complications in people with diabetes. My friend would argue that uh, TIR, uh, it can be used only in patients with uh, type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes who are on insulin. But a large number of, we have a great therapeutic inertia. Our people, they don't use insulin. Uh, we know that there is a, there is a big deal of uh, 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 therapeutic inertia which exists with the insulin initiation as well as insulin titration. Even if you put a patient on insulin, the patient will discontinue insulin. And the first intention of the patient is every time he will ask you that, can I discontinue the insulin? So unless and until we know the data, uh, most of us are using the Google Maps. And even if the Google Maps goes off for a minute, uh, we find ourselves lost. So how can we treat people with 95% uh, of the people they live with type, with type 2 diabetes and how can we not offer them the benefit of CGM by simply saying that the evidence in CGM is not coming, the evidence is not there, but the evidence is coming because the, their earlier studies were done only in type 1 patients. Now the recommendations are there that CGM should be a part of almost all the RCT, whether it is done in type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes. So unless uh, uh, in coming time, we will get definitely more and more evidence and more and more data. Uh, with the for the use of CGM in type 2 diabetes patient, even those if they are not on insulin. This is my dear friend Sunil Kota. I think he will be now. This is today morning we were when uploading our slides. So I will request him to now uh, come for the counter. Thank you.